to the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. My name is Amy Sher and I am a knitting pattern designer living in St. Louis, Missouri. This is the Vlogcast where I occasionally check in and show you what I'm up to, not only design-wise because um, I'm a designer so naturally a lot of the things I make are from my own patterns. Um, but also with my own personal makes, of which there are many this time. Uh, I sometimes spin, sometimes sew. So in addition to design knitting and personal knitting, I also have projects of those other types to show you. Um, so, we'll get right into it. Today I am wearing my coloring book tee which is a fingering weight uh, raglan <laughs> t-shirt, um, which I designed that was launched in July. So a little over a month ago now. And this sample is three quarter sleeves. It has these uh, kind of like Mariner inspired stripes in it. And this one is knit from Linen Quill. Uh, which was kindly provided by Pearl Soho. And since working with Linen Quill for this pattern, it's quickly become one of my favorite yarns of all time. Of all time. It creates such a lovely, wooly and rustic fabric, but then it has linen content in it, so it's not too warm, and it has some good airflow and it just knits up so beautifully. So I'm gonna come up close to you so I can show you. So this design features a compound raglan, which I was quite excited to include into my pattern library. Uh, compound raglan is a type of raglan increase where it increases quite rapidly right at the top here near the neckline because our bodies don't, you know, come down straight. Like this, this curve right here is not a straight line. Going from the neck to the shoulders, kind of this part, kind of sticks out a bit. There's like a bit of a curve there. And then it kind of has a little bit of a more direct slope that's less drastic. And then again, out to here. So it creates kind of this S curve on each, you know, obviously backwards on the other side, on each uh, shoulder so that it stretches to fit a broad shoulder a little bit better. Uh, so I'm really happy with the shaping and this has become one of my best selling patterns already. So that's exciting. Um, I wore it today just because I realized I was looking back through my vlog because um, I haven't filmed in so long. Uh, and I realized I had never worn this here and never shown the color and look to me at all. So I'm glad to jump back into vlogging and show up to you all in motion. Um, I have been filming, just not for this vlog. So my coffee subscribers get a monthly vlog as part of their perks. So I do kind of film like sneak peeks for all my products there. But this is my first time vlogging here in public for quite a while. So hello. Uh, let's move on to, should we move on to other finished objects? We should, I have like a hundred thousand things to show. So we're just gonna show one from my collection today and then we're gonna move on to personal stuff because there's so many. Hang on just a sec, I'm gonna adjust my camera here and stand up. So here we have my latest garment pattern, which will be coming out in October. This is part of a new collection that, that I'm really excited about, which is called Coming Home. It's an Anne of Green Gables collection. And um, 
my goal with this collection was to reinterpret and for the modern times a uh, little bit vintage inspired a little bit modern um very wearable and i wanted to also feature dyers from around the world um so this first one is featuring yarn um, from marie knits uh, Sharon, the owner of Renitz, kind of leaves at me the storm uh, in the colorway. I think it's called Oh My DK, and it is a DK weight, uh, super fine merino, quite a soft merino, uh, worsted spun, and this is in the colorway Scallion. So, as you can see, this pattern has a bit of a funnel neck. The curve of the neck sits comfortably below the neck point, which is here. Um, and it has a lace raglan increase. So cute little eyelets coming down to here. And then a little pleated puff at the top of the sleeve, which I think is such a killingly cute detail. Uh, so here you can see the top of the puff sleeve uh, right here. And it kind of balloons down and continues to be puffy all the way until until we reach this pass just past the elbow length and then it's finished with an eye forward edging uh, it is cropped at the waist just a little Ooh, that squeak is so awful i'm so sorry about that so this sweater is cropped right here just past the waistline which is here but in the pattern, I also give the yardage and the instructions to knit into the high hip. You know, this is an easy mod. It is knit top down. Um, so you work the neckline, you cast on at the neckline, which is really wide because later you have to fold parts of it and sew it together, which I have, you know, like a little pictorial illustration for in there created by my wonderful schematic artist, uh, Becky Monahan. And so you cast on like a super wide neck, then you work all the raglan stitches all the way down. And as you're splitting for sleeve, I, in pattern, I recommended that you sew together the top temporarily, just with a bit of extra waist yarn, just so you can try it on. And then after everything else is worked, uh, you pick up the neckband while at the same time sewing um, the top of the puff permanently. So the pickup also sews the pleat together. So you pick up through like multiple layers to make this little cute folded bit. And it's much easier than it sounds, I promise. Um, I'm so proud of this one because I feel like I really let my artistic streak fly. Um, Oftentimes when I design, I'm designing a product that I think you all will like. That's um, like the coloring book tea, which, you know, you can have infinite variations, but there's not, like there's design details, obviously, and I have to work every dimension of it and do all the math and everything. But I don't get to do things like a cute little funnel neck. Oh, there's the trash. We're gonna wait a minute. Okay. I think the trash truck has passed us. Uh, where was I? Oh, so I don't I get to play with beautiful little details like puff shoulder sleeves, the eye cord gathered sleeve. Um, there is some pretty rapid decreases here to make it puffy at the end. Um, I've had a few testers also knit all the way down to wrist length to create like a big balloon, like full length balloon sleeve, which is so good. <laughs> I can't wait to show you all. Um, I'll probably be back early next month when the pattern is launching to share that with you. But if you want to be the first to see all this stuff, you can subscribe my newsletter, uh, subscribe to my newsletter, and follow me on Instagram. Um, although Instagram is less reliable lately with showing people my stuff. So subscribe to my newsletter if you'd like to see um, my testers make all the different variations of it. I'll definitely show it on there. So some testers knitted it to the full length, some testers knitted it full sleeve, some, I think one tester's even doing it without the funnel neck. Some are doing it with like a little folded neck detail instead, which is really cute. Kind of like that, like a little folded funnel. Oh my goodness, that's also very cute. 
Untangle that. I've never tried it myself before, and now that I'm trying it, it's an extremely cute detail. I kind of love that. Wow, that's cute. <laughs> um, what else have testers done? Some are doing like a little short sleeve mod, which I think would be really cute. Um, alrighty, let's bring her back up here. So this is kind of your standard view, but I think um, as I'm finishing up the writing for it, I'm probably going to write in all the different like, suggestions, just quickly know all the different suggestions that are possible. Um, anyway, this is coming soon. So let's move on a little bit to my <laughs> other finished projects, which are all like personal non-work projects. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so please ignore how rumpled she is. <laughs> but this is a new drop shoulder key that I sewed from a Japanese pattern book. I showed the in-progress version to my coffee subscription vlog, like the exclusive vlog, um, a little while ago. But I wanted to show it here too. So it's a little, let me roll you down this. So it's a little like hip length, super swingy. Look at how much fabric there is. It's like a big swing top, but you know, once you've worn it for a bit and it kind of settles, it actually hangs quite straight and quite flattering. And there's a lot of space here. And um, so on the dress form, you can see like quite a drastic waist. But in fact, I no longer have a waistline like this. Mine is a little bit more filled out here and a little more filled out here. And, Actually, my dress form, which is by Fabulous Fit, has like a little padding system that I could theoretically pad this out with. But um, there's some bits of me here from having two babies that are like kind of like a loose, you know, like loose bowie stuff just from having to carry two children in there. Um, that is quite hard to fit for in a woven fabric. So if there's like you know, chest starts and waist starts and stuff for a top or dress here. I often have to adjust the fit here in the stomach now. And sometimes, you know, I spend all my time on spreadsheets doing fit calculations. And sometimes when I sew for myself, for my own wardrobe, I don't want to. So it's really nice to have a top like this that kind of skims over all the bits down here. <laughs> so I don't have to think about it. Um, I sewed this with very little serger intervention. I only sewed the edges of the facings. Everything else I either French seamed or hand tacked, so it's kind of like a almost invisible hem finish. And as I built out my wardrobe, the first, very first things that I've sewn from when I first started sewing have worn out. There's holes in them and they're so poorly made and poorly finished from my early beginner days that I don't want to keep them and I don't think they're worth mending. They were well made to begin with. Um, so I just wear them to death until they have like five holes in them. Then I toss them. And now that I'm replacing some of those earliest homemade items, I am focusing more on really beautiful finishes, clean as invisible as I can finishes. Um, on this particular project, I use the selvage here and in the back. So I immediately, <laughs> I immediately broke the loop, the thread loop, the crochet thread loop that I made for the button closure, but I'll fix that today. I try to put it, like take it off over my head without unbuttoning it, which was an error on my part. Um, but I used the back selvage here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. I can kind of see it. So I use the back selvage here. There's some text here that says in an eight euro collection, like whatever. So um, I use the selvage on different parts of the garment, which is exciting. So just being more careful with 
So as I'm building out my wardrobe, I'm being more and more careful with my finishes and where I cut and all of those things. Um, and I think becoming a knitter over the last like however many years, I don't know, like five years now, six years, um, means that I'm more willing to slow down and more willing to take my time for beautiful finishing. I'm not in a rush. We're not making fast fashion here. We're just making my clothes. And I want those clothes to be really nicely finished and really beautiful. So that was my focus for this garment. And I'm reasonably happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm not a super fan of this little boat neck situation. So I think if I was making it again, I would kind of bring it down to like a more scoopy situation. It's from a Japanese pattern book, so it's really easy. Um, it doesn't come with seam allowance in the pattern, so I could just scoop it out and re regrade the e-facing. Whatever. I'll make it again, probably. It's an easy to wear, comfortable item. Happy with that. All right, the next thing I want to show is this beautiful shawl that I made. Oh, should I should just go on this way. All right, so my next finished object is this shawl, which I knit anytime I had time to free, not from like, not doing work knitting. And this is the Sometime Alone Shawl by Sylvia McFadden. Uh, it's a lace triangle shawl that's worked at one corner and then you just keep increasing until it's a triangle. Um, so from corner to corner. And it has this really repetitive, really fun lace motif that actually, I think that would be like a beautiful tablecloth or doily or I don't know, something, something home decorative. Um, and then there's some garter edges. Some guard, the end is finished with garter and peacoat bind off, which I think is such beautiful detail. Uh, I knit this because all the shawls that I've made Actually, almost every shawl that I've ever made for myself have been hand spun, and my daughter Kaylee keeps spawning them, and then they just disappear forever. I never see them again. So, <laughs> this one is gonna be my shawl that nobody else is allowed to wear, that is gonna keep me warm. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lend this to anybody anymore, because it's so beautiful, and I don't want to do it again. I mean, I want to knit it again, but not because it got lost. You know, I want to knit it again because it's enjoyable, not because I don't have it anymore. Um, this is knit from Ragad, which is a colorway of Nutidin Unspun Yarn, uh, made by Honero Care. Um, everything I mention, all the materials, I will link down below. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful. It works up on size US 9. I can't remember what that is in millimeters, so I apologize for that. But big needles, big project, finishes up fast. Um, you're with me right now in my basement studio, actually. So um, in the winter, it gets quite chilly here. So this is really the project that I knit to keep myself warm down here while I'm working. Um, it's the coldest room in the house. Uh, so yeah, it's sometime on shop. Moving on. So I've been really just doing like hardcore winter knitting lately. Um, everything I make, I've been like studiously knitting up my Nutidin collection because I have over the last year and a half, amassed a little bit of knitted and yarn. And because I've just moved here last year, I keep saying that, but I've actually been here like a year and a half now. Because I just moved to St. Louis um, and I previously lived in Los Angeles, California. I actually didn't own many worsted or arrow weight pullovers. And my love affair with Nutidin happened to coincide with 
my moving here to St. Louis. I don't think that's an accident because now that I'm in a weather, like a climate that actually has cold weather, um, we have a good number of snow days per year. Uh, now I need garments that I totally didn't need in Los Angeles that I don't own. Uh, I'm reworking my whole wardrobe because two years ago, just before I moved, um, I had a baby. Did we really move with her while she was like a year old? Yeah, we did. Yeah, so a year, I've been here a year. Two years ago, I had a baby. So new body, new climate. I'm making a lot of clothes right now because I really need clothes. Um, last winter, I basically just stayed inside and it was so cold. And this year, both of my kids go to preschool and first grade. So I absolutely have to go outside. So I'm like working really hard right now too. I think that might be the theme of this week, like just like a hustle to get enough winter clothing so that I can go outside without dying. So personal knit. This is the ubiquitous ranunculus pullover or sweater by Midori Hirose. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's a top down circular yoke with slip stitch and lace texture. And I could see where I've made a mistake here. Yeah, there's like some places where you can't see the eyelids at all, but that's okay. Um, I view the lace as more of like a textural accent than like a lace lace. And I knit this yoke in a single evening of watching Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus when it was first released. And I think I knit this part, the eyelids, during like a chase where a young person, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, a young person's life is at risk. And I was like, ah! So mistakes were made and then I just fudged them in the next row. And then when I got to the slip stitch bits, I was like, oh no, the, the stitch count is not right. And I had to fudge it some more. So this is full of mistakes. But for my personal knits, I find that to be just fine. Who cares? Um, they're going on my body. Nobody, nobody else will ever know. Except now you all do because I just told you. Uh, so circular yoke. Then there's a little bit of raglan, which is my favorite kind of circular yoke construction. Um, I like it when there's a little bit of raglan under the arms, uh, so that it's not so that it curves around the body better. Um, I make quite a number of mods. I cast on without the neck band, so it could provide a more um, stable neck situation. And then after I finished the garment, I went back and picked up the neck band to give it a nice firm line up. And I also cropped it quite a bit. I think it was meant to go to like a full hip, but I wanted this to be more of like a transitional fall piece, which I wear over my mini high-waisted jeans. All my pants are high-waisted because I find low cut quite uncomfortable under my baby belly, like the former baby belly. Um, so it is slightly cropped. And I also did, instead of like a bubble sleeve, I did a tapered sleeve. I actually just copied the wrist measurement from Twinkle Pullover by the same designer, Midori Hirose, knowing that the upper arm to wrist ratio is like similar and then I just did some math and pushed it. So that turned out really well. Uh, it's not quite cold enough to wear it yet, but I live in hope. Um, I'm not a big fan of summer, so I'm really excited that it's almost over. So that is my ranunculus pull over. All right, we're gonna move on. But just to warn you, I have like a hundred thousand finished objects because I haven't filmed in such a long time. And just like I said before, <laughs> it's cold in Missouri during the winter, so I'm like in a hurry to knit. So I've knit many things since we last spoke. But I think the last time we spoke, I was actually working on this weather well over, which is very hard to determine which way is from. Especially, I think this way is the back. So this is my like proper winter pullover. The other one was the ranunculus, which is at a bigger gauge, looser gauge, an airier fabric. It's actually gonna be like my fall formation piece. But this weather well. Um, 
This is my full winter, full length piece. That squeak is so annoying. I'm gonna get Roy to boil that. Um, let's see. Weather Owl by, I think, Kiyomi Burjum. And it has, you know, you can see it. It's a very bold color work piece. I'm gonna move it back so you can see the whole thing. Okay, the weather I'll pull over. I also have this in Nutidin. The green is called, ooh, I forget what it's called, Skullscrow, I think. It's from their February collection. And then the white is called Snow, and it is a, an undyed one, uh, fine wool, very soft. And then the Skullscrow is more of like a traditional Swedish wool one. Quite colorful, let a bit in a wash, so I washed it with color catchers. Uh, I also like fudged the gauge because it is knit at I think like 19 stitches, 18 stitches, and I didn't like how fluffy this particular base turned out to be. Um, It's just that this white was very fluffy and the skull scroll was very fluffy and then when I swatched it, I didn't like the fabric. So uh, what I did was I regaged it. I went into a spreadsheet and I listed out all the original measurements for my size, which is, I think I did the second size. And then I worked the math using my new gauge. So I basically regraded the whole pattern. And it turns out that with a couple of exceptions, my new gauge works perfectly fine in the smallest size. So I was able to fudge nearly all the measurements by just casting on the smallest size, making new knitting. Um, the only changes I made was like the yoke depth. I had to change kind of how many rows I worked um, just to match my new gauge. But other than that, it worked out really well. Um, the fit is terrific. I love that like oversized fit because with round yokes, I often find that it pulls in the shoulders for me. And I was discussing this with a friend of mine on Instagram who sews, and she said that she's also like a sewist knitter, and she also said that she experiences a lot of that stretchy shoulder problem. So I like my round yokes to have a buttload of ease in the shoulders, and this does that. And I'm quite happy with this mix. It has a similar funnel neck detail, Although it's constructed very differently than the raglan. Um, and also the funnel neck detail is worked all in one instead of picked up. So it doesn't quite have the same like neckline structure as the um, my own sweater and puff sleeves does. But I think that's okay. Um, if I have problems with it because it's worked bottom up, I guess I could just go back and bind off the neck and pick it up for that extra structure, but hopefully it'll be okay. It's kind of like an oversized Lucy Pussy fit anyway, so it should, it should be okay, I hope. And oh, for the color work, I did Jacquard, Jacquard, ladder back, float catching. Um, my first time doing it on a full garment, and I'm very pleased with it. It hardly shows through. There's only like a couple spots where it shows, uh, which is much better compared to my usual catch the foot in the back method. So that is my weather up over. I've been dreaming of making a weather up for many years now, and I'm glad to finally be in a climate where I can do so. So that's one made. Let me get a sock walker so I can show you the nice thing because I'm not sure you can get this yarn anymore. Uh, I bought this, I think, before I even left Los Angeles. So <laughs> it's been a while, and I've not seen this dyer from back to color away again. So this is my most recent vanilla socks. It was knit using Tiny Human Knits self stripping yarn. This colorway is called the Dunder Knit Rainbow. And I bought it in, I think, 2021, or maybe even 2020, <laughs> intending to make, you know what, it was 2021. It was in 2021 that I bought this, and I intended to make a pair of pride 
in socks for June in 2021. And then I didn't cast it on until midway into June this year. And I didn't bind it off until last week. So, uh, vanilla socks, I think I did toe up so that I could do, um, use up every bit. So what I did was I divided the 50 gram skein into two balls and I matched the beginning. I wanted to start with the yellow and then exactly halfway worked out to like this red bit here, but I ran out. So there was like a shorter red bit on one sock than the other. So I just slept it. It's fine. It's just for my own personal knits. I don't care. Um, I did a short row heel. I did the fish lips kiss short row here at heel using some leftover knit picks I had from a design uh, for my delicate fox, uh, which is available on the knit picks. And yeah, my sock collection is also wearing out. Um, socks are kind of the only thing that I consistently wear holes through when it comes to knitted things. I've not yet had to mend any sweater except for one by Andrea Marie, which I'll talk about next time. Um, but I, I honestly think what happened with the one sweater I had to mend was a good user error. I just bound it off too tight and the neck didn't want to hold the weight, so it broke. So I've never like worn through one through a garment um, just because the yarn broke. So uh, with no user error. So that's on me, not on anybody else. Uh, but this one is to replace some other socks I have. I go through socks rather quickly. I wear them like nine months of the year. So uh, I need to knit more socks basically to keep my feet warm. It's almost sock season again. I'm quite excited. Okay. My last finished object is this skein of hand spun. Uh, this, is, this was spun from a bat by Lindsay of Artifacts of Appreciation. And I think last time we spoke, I was spinning this and now it's finally finished. This is intended to be a sock yarn. It has quite a lot of strong fibers in it that you don't often see um, in knitting, like milled yarn. So I'm quite excited to knit my first pair of socks using a bat that's um, all non-superwash, no nylon, just wool. So that's quite exciting. Um, I did it kind of a traditional three ply, so I split, split the bat up to be three equal parts and I spun it. I did have quite a bit of leftover because <laughs> I'm not a very consistent spinner yet, um, but it still made like a good, I think 100-ish gram skein. And I was very lucky that Lindsay carded this right before she went on maternity leave. And I can't wait to, if she, whenever she feels ready to come back, I'm really excited to spin more bats from her. So I'll show a picture if I can find a picture of it, but I, I don't remember if I took pictures of the bat because it was so long ago now. Um, and let's do a whip. I have one spinning whip. And that's this guy here. This is a bit of pole work that I'm spinning from Nest Fiber. Don't have any particular goal in mind. Like no project in mind. Just wanted to spin. Uh, let me see what it says. It says it's organic pole work, and this is in the colorway from Meadow. This was one of her um, club colorways. And I love the way the blues transition into the yellow. That's gonna be really pretty. I'm gonna do like a two ply, hopefully DK to Worsted. And I'll probably make an accessory from it, which is what I do with most of my single sand head spuns. I have yet to gather up the courage to spin for a sweater yet. All right, so that's all my finished projects, almost all my finished objects. And what's in progress right now? Um, I can't show the rest because they're secret. But let's move on to some acquisitions. So I acquire yarn all the time every other day, just kidding. I acquire yarn quite often, because it is my job. And I am not ready to talk about some of these yarns yet, so I wanted to talk to you instead about some of the fabrics that I acquired, particularly this one. 
This is a beautiful wool flannel that I bought from Miss Makakabi. It is 100% wool. I think it's not super wash because it feels very sticky to me. It's, um, so this is a yarn bag flannel and I purchased it to make myself a dress. So I'm gonna do like the risky thing of unfolding it. So that's kind of the scale of it. So I'm gonna make myself a big old dress to layer over leggings and base layers. Oh my gosh, now it's very hard to fold back up. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna make a big old dress that I can pair with leggings and base layers for winter. Um, it's beautiful, made in Japan fabric, so I'm quite happy with that. I've also got this corduroy, cotton corduroy. Also, this is all from Mrs. Tatabi. It's really hard to get the color to show. I think that's gonna be really nice for an overdress, like a pinafore. And I've got something cuter, <laughs> something much cuter to show. Also from Mrs. Tatabi. Corduroy for a pinafore for Haley, my oldest, for school. So I think that's everything I have to show. Um, as you can see, I purchased quite a bit of fabric recently because winter is definitely coming up and I very much want to sew more things. I keep doing this thing where I go on like sometimes ethical, sometimes not sustainable websites to find clothing for winter. And either, either it's sustainable and I can't afford it or it's not sustainable and I feel bad buying it. And in the end, I just ended up buying a good, good amount of fabric that's milled in Japan. So I feel reasonably confident about the worker protections. Um, I'm trying to avoid cottons that are milled in Xinjiang region of China. And that's quite challenging. Actually, I don't know where this cotton was grown because nobody tells you their supply chain. Um, not in knitting, not in yarns, not in fabric. So that's quite unfortunate and I'm hoping that I'll be able to source more fabrics that steer clear of that region um, due to the human rights abuses there. If you'd like to read more about that, I'm going to drop a link below, but um, I feel that it's in the sustainable knitting, sustainable um, clothing world, I think that's become quite well known. So that's all I have for you today. I'll be back in a couple weeks to talk about the rest of my coming home and Green Gables collection. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. You see a rabbit here in its natural habitat.